Failed the capacity test on the Vader 51.2 volt 100 amp hour server rack battery. Got my little energy meter hooked up right here for a temporary to be able to track the energy that's moved through this battery. The battery was charged to 56 volts off the inverter. We'll turn on the inverter, we'll get our idle draw and then start the capacity test. Here goes the inverter now. Okay, the inverter is online. So roughly let it settle in right here. So 57 watts idle consumption on the 48 volt inverter I'm using, roughly one amp right there on the energy meter. And then what are we showing on the Vader display? Uh, around 0.9. So pretty close, pretty close. So now let's begin the capacity test. I got the load set up on the inverter. It's a charging another battery in a portable power station. So here goes the load. We'll see what it settles in at once it comes up. All right, the load is starting on the Vader for the capacity test pull down. Let everything settle in. So I'm trying to go around 20 amps so hopefully this load will represent that properly. All right, looks like we're right at 21 amps of load out of the Vader. So yeah, roughly five hours. Uh, so it'll be a long capacity test. This is the largest capacity battery I've tested to date. So uh, I'll see you in a few hours. All right, there is the halfway mark on the Vader 51.2 volt 100 amp hour server rack unit. The built-in monitor is showing 52% remaining, two hours and 29 minutes to go. So corresponding pretty well. So at 20%, the battery gives you a red indicator on the display, which is a nice feature. Then when you get down below 10% on the Vader, it gives you a extra warning that says recharge battery. So I've got the inverter shut off at 44 volts. So I think we can still make the 5,120 watt hours that is claimed by Vader out of this battery. All right, the voltage is starting to drop off on the Vader. It's showing 0% remaining on the display through the BMS, uh, really close. So I don't know if the battery's BMS will drop out first or my inverter low voltage cut off. I lowered it all the way down, so got to see what happens. We're knocking all over the door of 5,120, so really, really close. I hope it makes it. All right, the inverter's output just cut off due to low voltage. 5,116 watt hours but the battery has not shut down, but the inverter output did. So I hit the low voltage disconnect on that inverter. So even though I did not hit 5,120 watt hours on the inverter, the battery output is still active. I still have voltage on this battery. So that little four watt hours right there, if I was using capacity tester, not off an inverter, I could get the 5120. And I didn't charge it to their full recommended voltage either. I had a conservative charge voltage. So I'm very happy with this capacity reading. I'm gonna call that a pass. And what do you get when you purchase a Vader 51.2 server rack unit? You get a comprehensive user manual, a user warranty card. They give you two two-foot, six-gauge, 100-degree jacketed leads. And, of course, it comes with the brackets for rack mounting. I, they're removable, so I'm demonstrating that, too. So if you're stacking them vertically like I do, you can take the brackets off the side to save, you know, about an inch on either side. But nice heavy-duty brackets, and that's using six machine screws to hold it to the side of the battery. So, you know, whichever way you want to mount it, you can mount it vertically or horizontally. No restrictions on that due to the internal construction. The battery's got the smart LCD display to show you all your information, your cell voltages, everything like that. You've got a built-in 125 amp breaker right here, carrying handles. It weighs right at 102 pounds, a little on the heavy side, but you know, there's a lot of energy in there. So of course there's going to be some weight, but not even close if you just try to get this much energy and lead acid. And the battery is right at seven inches in depth, 17 and three eighths in width without the brackets, and 17 and three quarters in height or depth, depending on which direction you're mounting it. And here's your specification sheet. I'll pause it, read it if you want. If not, we'll continue on. Another thing I note on the battery right here on the terminals, we do have double terminals for paralleling. This is two gauge wire. I tried to fit one alt lugs in there just to see. Two gauge copper lugs is the biggest I could fit in these terminals, so just making note of that. And when you get your battery, when you push the display, the display's not going to work. Because when this breaker is in the off position, it kills power to everything, even the display. All right, so I got the Vader disconnected. So now it's time for the teardown inspection. Not really a teardown, just got machine screws everywhere. So basically a disassembly, but I want to check everything out. All right, I got all the machine screws out of the cover, so I should be able to just pop the cover up. And we should be able to look at the battery assembly. Oh, wow. That's neat. Very neat and tidy. Awesome. And underneath the cover right here, there's a huge chunk of high density foam that adds extra support to this battery right here. And then the cells are covered with some plastic right here. I don't know if that's high density polyethylene or whatever it is, but there's a plastic insulator over top of the cell bus bars and things. So 
I'll break it down a little bit further, but wow, I'm impressed so far. Look at that. Isn't that a beautifully built pack? Wow. Uh, this is ex exceeding my expectations by far. I mean, that is, yeah, that's, that's better than some $3,000 server rack units that I already own. And this unit right here is sub $1,000. So, uh, yeah, I'm just looking at that in amazement for just a minute. Let me, let me take this in and I'll get right back with you. Yeah, that's a very nicely constructed pack. You see all the cells have plastic separator grids. You know, that's a newer development. You know, those ain't been out very long. You know, you're starting to see batteries with those plastic uh, cell separators in there now. They're actually a pre-molded grid that keeps the cells separated. You see right there, they still got a separator material, but the grid holds the cells in rigidity, if you will. Uh, Nice thick bus bars with expansion joints. Look at all the balance leads with thread locker on them. Uh, Self-locking nuts on the studs. Got temperature sensor there. Got a temperature sensor there. Got a Bluetooth antenna. Got an onboard breaker. We got six gauge, 200 degree jacket wire. And that's a JBD Smart BMS. I'll get you a closer shot of that here in just a minute. Uh, everything's tight. I've already checked. Checked all the fasteners. Nothing's loose in this unit. Just high quality construction. We got nice metal reinforcement right here to hold each of the cells down. And this is a gap under here underneath all the vents. So if any vent ever leaves, there's nothing to block it. You now all the connections everywhere are just, I mean, super tight on it. Just even got sheathing going through where the wires go through the casing right there. We have a sheath, so nothing rubs. Uh, I mean, it's just, just a well-built pack. And there is the JBD BMS number, SP16S, 100 amp BMS. So all the communications, it's a smart BMS. So let me get a uh, ice pack and things. I'm gonna pull this sensor right here. I don't want to mess with that one right on top of the cells. Each of the sensors are NTC and they tie into the same port on the board. So it doesn't matter which one I select. Either one will show the safety. So I'll pull this one off. I'll do a high temp and low temp test on it. See if the uh, BMS disconnects at proper temperatures. All right, I've got the Vader charging on a golf cart charging. See, we're charging right there. I've got this sensor pulled. Let me go to the next display screen. So there's our temperature sensor readouts on the smart battery LCD. So I got an ice pack here. I'm gonna wrap around that NTC sensor and see if we can get the trigger low temp charge protection. So let me position the sensor in the ice pack here. Try to get it completely covered or get a good reliable reading. And I will hold it there and watch these numbers and we'll see if it disconnects charging. All right, it stopped charging. Our sensor read below 32. It took it exactly one minute to detect that. So you can see the status right there, cut. So stop charging, we take the sensor and get it warm back up and we're back to charging. Works exactly like it's supposed to. All right, over temperation activated and back to charging. So yes, if you're in the market for a server rack battery, you know, 51.2 volt, 100 amp hour unit, yes, I can recommend this Vader. Um, nothing wrong with it. Everything works as that.